Welcome to the NFL Picks Against the Spread, Week 15 for the 2022-2023 NFL season. It's another solo edition, concurrent solo edition, redundant solo edition of Big Rye and the Fat Guy with Big Rye uh, away filming the sequel to Willow 2. Uh, currently, we are 101, 101, and 6 for a even 50% record, which would be losing against the Juice, which I'm sure I will touch on in this video. Uh, the Thursday Nighter is featuring the San Francisco 49ers at the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, with 69% of early betters on the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, the line is, uh, as you can see, San Francisco minus 3.5 with the hook in favor of the Niners. Uh, we're going to be taking Seattle. It's purely a contest pick. Uh, this line does include the Debo Samuel news. So that's one thing I, I always find interesting that people say like, oh, so-and-so is out. Well, yeah, this is this is accruing for that. <laughs> like, they know, like, <laughs> people betting this, know that Debo Samuel is out. Debo Samuel does have an effect on the line. A lot of receivers don't, which is another interesting thing. Uh, when, I mean, the way I like to look at industry it, um, injuries is seeing, like, if there's breaking news. It has to be breaking news, though. Like, it can't be, it can't be, like, especially this season, they're kind of doing it where, like, they may or may not play because, like, that probability, I feel, has been factored in almost. Uh, I would say the most... The best example of that, if you were to go through and you found uh, historical line data, would be this year, LA Chargers against Jacksonville. It's kind of like a middling line, it felt like. Uh, that being said, um, uh, if there's breaking news and you see uh, the drop-off in win probability, so you'd have to be able to calculate win probability, you know, based on the juice i mean money line would probably be the best way just a shift in money line if you remove the vig from the uh from the money line and then you subtract the uh that win probability or the current win probability from that and it'll give you a negative number that would really tell you um the value of each player and then another way to do this i don't know why i'm giving away modeling secrets not that i don't model anymore but there was a time and then if you were able to uh uh kind of average it out for a position you could really find out the min max of what a positional you know what a, what a player in each position could affect the line so that's a long-winded approach to say that uh the Debo Samuel injury is factored into this pricing and however though there might be some um some Brock Purdy news too because that's so crazy it's like what an NFL season you know that's why I, the NFL people the NFL is rigged type thing it's very hard for me to comply around that. I mean, is that the storyline they wanted? Tom Brady to have, like, have a complete lame duck game against a, a Mr. Irrelevant? Another storyline that's completely lighting it up. Mind you, that's that's another reason like that there could be closing line value uh, on San Francisco at three and a half just because... How do I put this? Because the storyline is going to be Brock Purdy tearing it up and Seattle losing to Carolina. Like that's a pretty big upset. But then again, is that see, and this is like a, like a conundrum almost in my head, like public m money moving the line. See, th this would be if public money moved the line and then it got bet back down and it, whatever it closed at, I get that. But like, you know, just cause I think it might shift to three and a half and then come back down isn't a good case uh, to take San Francisco. So like I said, I'm just going to go with a contest pick. I'm going to go with my laurels. I'm going to go with Seattle plus three and a half. And I think it closes his high juice uh, plus three and a half. On to the next game, we have Indianapolis traveling to Minnesota with Indianapolis being four and a half point favorites. Uh, this is another no man's, this is not another, this is a no man's land, no man's land line between three and a half and five and a half. Cause six, three, six and seven are the big boys, three in particular. So there is going to be mobility in this line. I don't have a beat on which way it's going to go. Um, it is interesting, too, because they the Minnesota, uh, I guess it, they, people like using frauds and exposed. They just won some football games in unlikely fashions. And then a team that is slightly better than them. We I think we could argue that. I, don't, I think it's fair. The Lions are slightly better than the – they deserve to be favored. I don't know. Is it a pick them in neutral field? I think, I think it should be like – you know, minus 113 or something for the Lions. But anyways, I do think the Lions are a very slightly better football team than the Minnesota Vikings. That exposure, like, uh, is that going to have an effect on the price, right? Like, are we getting too few points? Then um, 
than we should with Indianapolis. That's the internal argument. Um, I, this is a purely contest tick. We're going to take Indianapolis. Uh, when in doubt, take the points. Contest pick Indianapolis Colts. On to the next game, we have a uh, <laughs> Baltimore Ravens at Cleveland Browns, with the Cleveland Browns being three-point favorites at home. This one, I think there is some uh, predictive value here. Like, uh, usually I say it like the lines are set and solid by, I mean, we're at week 15, right? We kind of know, we know a lot about each of these teams. The only difference is, is this is, this will be the third game back with uh, the Cleveland Browns uh, uh, having Deshaun Watson at the helm. So it's the a lot of like the Browns performance priors are going to be set on those two performances. So think of it. This is almost as like a like a week three and a half kind of for the Browns only because they know a lot about the rest of the team. But the quarterback has so much um so much uh, influence on the game. So this is an interesting one in that situation. Like, do you think Deshaun Watson is going to improve? And I, I have to argue, like, you got to be a little bit optimistic because you really couldn't play, like, much worse. Like, he hasn't completed a nice, like, very many nice passes. Like, you know, I hate using X's and O's and stuff like that and talking about players, but it is worth mentioning. Like, the, the touchdown for... Uh, to Njoku was just a very, very simple play. And he, he didn't score an offensive touchdown against the Houston Texans. They are playing Tyler Huntley. Like, if can he play a little, like, just not even, like, bad Deshaun Watson, but, like, an average performance should make the Browns four and a half, five and a half point, point favorite, in my opinion. So I do think there is value on the Browns. And that is going to hurt me in the name of the week section. On the next one, we have the Dolphins, seven and a half point underdogs. At the Buffalo Bills, who are seven and a half point favorites, sixty uh, percent of early money is on the Buffalo Bills. This is a bit of a tough one here. Um, I, like normally, I don't care about receivers, but they are making an impact, and I think Miami is it's kind of a big one. Like I actually think Hill has, um, like he does actually have a significant, per, like maybe like even a five percent, uh, five uh, percent effect negative effect if he's out on uh miami's chances uh miami's win probability which i mean i'm probably estimating a little bit high there but i i, I do feel like I, I used to just you know discard receivers for the most part but i do feel this one is a little bit more significant than usual not because of hill's so good but because of the importance of the offense but like i said that is factored into the line but how hurt is he because i think this is one of those middle ones like I haven't read these ruled out, and I perfectly, I purposely didn't read anything today because I have to treat these lines like they were uh, uh, on Monday night. So we are going to take Miami. We are going to take seven and a half. We are going to be optimistic here. It's 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 always difficult to take. Uh, oh, I am wearing a a uh, Bills to uh, take the points against the Bills, considering they are able to smash any spread. But oddly enough, they have been like winning games and not covering which is kind of, I feel, the most unlikely of scenarios. Uh, I'm not sure where this is going to go. I think it's really hinging on injury news. Injury news is, like, it's... it's. I think that's a, the easiest way to get an edge in sports betting is figuring out through social media, and this is not a talent Big Rye or I have, or an effort, or even an interest, even though we really should, uh, Big Rye and I have put in. But injury hit like news is... I think this is a way to get an edge, you know, because they obviously the 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 market makers, the the big betters, they obviously get this in as soon as humanly possible. But I think that's a replicatable replicatable process. Modeling is so difficult that um, you know you have to have a very like I have a reasonably extensive math background. I think that's fair to say, um, but not in the level that to to build an efficient model. At least I don't think so, right? Or at least exploring the time it would take to learn what I don't know, then to apply it, then to dry test it, then to live test it. It's a lot. It's a big process, right? And what if you're wrong? You've just wasted all that time, uh, which is more limited resource than money for most. Um, whereas uh, understanding injuries and being able to get that information really quickly and separating the signal from the noise, I guess I'm plugging a Nate Silver book. I didn't really like it. I felt you know it's so big anyways uh, 
We're going to take Miami. We're going to take seven and a half. And the best way, I think, for um, an amateur sports better to elevate their game is to really, really be able to get a break on injury news early and understanding when that has already been put into the line and when it hasn't. On to the next one, we have Atlanta at New Orleans with uh, Atlanta catching four points and the Desmond Ritter led Atlanta Falcons. I think I think this is a little bit of a drop off here. Um, it it's going to be interesting here, and I think this is another game much like the Cleveland Browns, but even more so. This is kind of like a week one and a half, I would say, for the Atlanta Falcons because Desmond Ritter again a rookie. It's it's going to be hard to establish a prior. Uh, that being said, I think. Laying the four points here, I think, is prudent. I, I think this is going to close New Orleans minus five and a half, despite early money on the uh, Atlanta, early betting volume on the Atlanta Falcons. That's that's it's not like a it's not a shift that I would bet on. I did bet on, uh, I put a little bit of money on an early line, and it has moved significantly against me. So we will get to that, but it's going to be a contest pick. New Orleans Saints minus four. On to the next one, we have the Philadelphia Eagles, which. I know I misplaced that beanie. It's not a beanie. It's a toque. Our eight and a half point favorites on the road against division rival Chicago Bears with 83% of the uh, betting volume on the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, we're going to be taking the Philadelphia Eagles. We're going to lay the eight and a half points here. Uh, this is a team too. I I, I did see something uh, interesting, um, a stat. And this is something I don't think is quite reflected in a lot of the lines. Maybe more so like in some of these later spreads for the Philadelphia Eagles, but in terms of like toss-up situations to go for it, the Eagles are the most aggressive team probably the last ten years. Like they're they're very very aggressive. They had a was it a fourth and seven from I think it was a 42, 43, and they threw a touchdown pass against the New York Giants. I love that kind of stuff. I think it's the way you play football. I love how they go for it. They sneak on uh, fourth and short. I'm this is starting to become my favorite team to watch. The Eagles. I like the 49ers, but I feel like there's more conviction and more belief. I mean, I, I hate using emotional, anecdotally led terms, uh, you know, cliched terms, sports talk, even to describe, uh, you know, what I like about a team. But this is, I like how they're coached. I really do. I like, I, you know, I hate using a, a buffering word like like, but they're the Eagles are. They speak to me. They they speak more uh, championship caliber because of decision making. So I I you know, technically speaking, yeah, the Chiefs are the best team in the league. They have the best quarterback. You know, the Bills are in the conversation. It's one of the two, followed by Dallas, perhaps San Francisco, maybe not with Brock Purdy and uh, the Eagles. But I like it's hard for me to not put the Eagles in terms of like winning a winning a title over those teams just because. You know, the Eagles aren't trying to, like, crush points, point spreads. They're not just trying to put up points. They're trying to win games. And I think they're the most efficient at doing it. I really like the Eagles. This is a really big breath of fresh air because a lot of stuff I don't like in the league, a lot of incredibly bad coaching. Uh, just look at the Raiders and the Rams game. That was horrendous. Um, Denver, continually Denver. Not that I caught very much of the Chiefs game, but when you see that, there at least is some duality to it. I like the Eagles. I like a minus eight and a half, and uh, they're just exciting to watch. On the next one, we have Dallas laying six points at Jacksonville with 79% of the early betters holding Dallas Cowboys tickets. We are going to take the Jacksonville Jaguars here. I, I never say that, <laughs> Jaguars. Uh, the six points at home, it's purely a contest pick. This is probably, I mean, maybe it shades up to six and a half. I wonder if people are going to use that Houston game. I was one of the few on the Houston money line. Really, really, really small amount of money for me. Like, I, I can't imagine, I, I actually can't think that I've ever bet, aside from like World Cup long shots. I don't think I've bet that small on anything in, I don't know, since 2003, 2004, when I was in, in high school. But <laughs> that's... uh. I did bet on the Houston money line uh, plus eleven seventy five. It's you know fun ride. <laughs> uh, Dallas able to close it out, and they were underdogs at one point. It's very interesting. You know, it's it's interesting when a team is favored even though they're down. Anyways, I think this could close at six and a half. I don't really have a beat on the closing line, uh, and that's always the 
why do we use the closing line as a marker? I want to bring that up. It's because uh, at the end, if you were to, uh, there's a gap. Okay, so say you bet at minus 110. Minus 110 accrues to, got to look over just to get exactly. It's up here, but I like seeing it visually. 52.38% win probability. If it's minus 10 on one, both sides, that equates to what? 547 so think about it. They have a 4.7% edge. And oh, and also too, why do why can two events, why did their probability exceed a hundred? Well, that's because it's it's your your it's like optimistic. You're overpaying, right? You're overpaying. If both sides were even, then Peter would get Paul's money or Paul's would get Peter's. At minus one ten, it leaves a little bit of money behind for the book. Now that four point seven percent. That's a pretty big window. It's it's more narrow in in uh, in baseball. In baseball, you can get down to like one point eight percent. So imagine that's another thing too. Um, uh, whenever I'm looking for something to bet on, like baseball sides are, I think almost late season are almost impossible. If they have their their margin at one point eight percent, and that means on either side, uh you're going to lose. And what that means is if you were to pick either side randomly, and by the way, most of your choices are random, despite what you think they are, you're going to lose no matter what side you pick pretty much like just over a large enough sample. So think about it. If baseball's got a 1.8% margin, that means that they like, they really, really know the true probability within that, that error rate, right? You know, margin of error. If you're going to use a a vote taking term in the NFL, it's a little bit larger at 4.7. I bet you they're, you know, they could lower it even more if they wanted to, but then there's props. Props are like, you know, 7.4% on bet three, six, five for a lot of them all the way up to nine, even on pinnacle nine, but then they farm it out to switch analytics. So those are beatable because yeah, you have to pay this massive juice, but there's uncertainty. They don't know. That's why they have to charge this premium to try and fit it in that box. So it's counterintuitive that, you know, the higher juice actually offers the bigger edges, which you wouldn't think. But that's because they they don't try very hard because they allow this huge margin for error. That being said, NFL, it is reasonably small, 4.7. So to get in that box, it's they can be wrong. So maybe this is six, six and a half. But it's, it's going to be very hard to to beat that number in real life. So Jacksonville plus a long-winded uh, plus six at home. On the next game, rather than the Detroit Lions, the the new kids on the block, Detroit Lions, maybe the best in the division, on the road against the New York Jets as one point underdogs. Uh, we're going to uh, this is one of those lines where it's I I think like the Mike White injury might actually be a thing. I don't know if it's fully baked in this line, and I think this line could have mobility on the news of what Mike White's injuries. It's, you know, I, I'm drawing a lot from that, like, the visual impact of that. Like, that was a brutal, brutal shot he took. Um, but I think the Lions are going to get a little bit of gas here. I think the Lions are going to close at uh, maybe minus one and a half, minus two, all the way up to two and a half. I think that's the limit, though. I think the limit is Lions minus two and a half, and I think the lowest is Lions plus one and a half. Normally, those won't matter, but I think that it's worth a money line bet because you're going to realize it. I mean, maybe not in the old days. They, they, I think they mispriced. At least I felt that, and we bet that way. Big Ryan and I, they mispriced the gap between minus two and a half and minus two and a half in relativity to how it was scored. I don't think they do it anymore. So technically, it doesn't really matter. But like I, I have been saying, you're better off betting money lines if you want to realize it, because a lot of people go, oh, you know, it doesn't matter if I laid four, or I laid seven. They won by ten. Well. You know, the, the difference is if you had to bet, um, you know, let's say $200 instead of, you know, 290 to win, you know, to win 100, that's that's a big deal. You know, it, that like that's a you can visually see that, you know, obviously it's the same. It doesn't matter. It didn't matter in that case, but that is more um, visually palpable. So I think, you know, and maybe you do realize it a little bit more. Um, there is a possibility that that's true. Anyways, uh, I'm going to take the Detroit Lions, and I do like them in real life on the money line. On to the Pittsburgh Steelers at the road, uh, on the road, uh, to the Carolina Panthers. Former owner of the Steelers, Dave Tepper, now the owner of the Carolina Panthers. 
not full owner, partial owner. Anyways, <laughs> we're going to be taking Carolina uh, Panthers. We are going to be laying the one point. Uh, this is an interesting one here. This is uh, going to be a more than likely Mitchell Trubisky led uh, Pittsburgh Steelers at the Carolina Panthers, who are actually I they're technically in the the playoff race, which is really crazy to think about, considering how bad that division has performed. I actually am interested in watching this just to see what happens. Uh, I think there is a, possibly a little bit of value on the Panthers here. This is another thing when I talk about priors, it just means like previous examples that you extrapolate um, information from. This is a backup quarterback potentially playing for the Steelers. And Sam Darnold doesn't exactly have a big sample, and he might be outrunning. Like, he might be, maybe he's just outrunning expectations or, you know, mathematical expectations. Or maybe he's just better, you know, he's possibly better or the situation is better for him uh, than what um, the current models are predicting. I think that is a possibility. And I think there might be a little bit of value on the Carolina Panthers. I'm comfortable laying all the way up to two and a half probably. So I actually think there's value on this number. I like the Carolina Panthers. I don't mind laying the one point. On to the next one. We have the Kansas City Chiefs laying 14 on the road against the Houston Texans with uh, nearly identical uh, uh, betting volume between the both teams on these early lines. We are going to be taking, see, I have to look because I'm so impartial to it. When in doubt, take the points, Houston Texans. This is probably exactly where it should be. And uh, I mean, people maybe, maybe it should be 17 and a half. It, trust me, it gets a little bit murky. Like the difference between six and seven is monumental. The difference between 14 and 17 isn't that big, if that makes sense. Just because when there's a lot more points, the distribution's you know, the, the points mean less and it gets, you know, really close with, within each other, right? Like they could just as easily win by 21 as they could by 18, pretty much, uh, the Chiefs. So the, whereas the Texans, I mean, them winning by 21 between them and 14, is like monumental. So strange how those distributions work. But that being said, 14, uh, I think is probably right. I think they're probably losing at minus 110 on both sides. But that could be a, maybe that's a, overreaction because the Texans, you know, as 14 and a half to 18 and a half point dogs, depending on where you got this number, you know, performed very, very well against a very strong Dallas team. Very, very, I hate, you know, another, another, when you hear yourself speak all the time, you're just a prisoner of your own language, always making mistakes. Uh, anyways, the, the Texans, I think this is probably right. And, but I'm wondering if it should be something like 17, 17 and a half. I'm not really a fan of these games because I think they're, just very hard to figure out market wise, and it's also understanding. Like I think beating the juice is harder on uh, on longer numbers. So this is going to be a contest pick. It's going to be the Houston Texans. Okay, we got the New England Patriots on the road against the Las Vegas. I almost said Oakland Raiders. Forty seven catching forty seven percent of early betters. We are going to be taking the New England Patriots. We are going to take the one point. I'm completely indifferent to this, but this is always like these are the fun markets to watch in terms of. Uh, sentiment injury news because there is mobility like um a lot of the, like the threes if it opens three it kind of stays there this one could go two and a half either way i i you know i i think there's like just a contest pick worth of value on the new england patriots at the one point uh margin but i am curious to see where it closes here like i could see vegas minus two and a half and i could actually see um uh, the patriots minus two and a half and then you could possibly, you know, that'd be a pretty good money line pickup going from plus money to, you know, minus 121 or something like that. would be a significant, uh, uh, significant gain in expected value if you were able to bet early. And that's where the line closed, but you have to know that too. And, uh, and that's kind of what we're prognosticating. This show is less about, you know, who's going to win, who's going to cover and understanding which way the market's going to shift, why, and, you know, theorizing those types of ideas, you know. I like betting NFL sides is I very rarely do it unless it's a really early line, you know, and I did bet one for significant money and I'm going to get hosed on it because of an injury. And we're going to talk about that. And that should be coming up uh, actually the next game. Here we are. We have the Arizona Cardinals at the Denver Broncos. Denver, Denver Broncos starting Brett Rippon when catching 22% of the bets and two and a half uh, points at home. They are now two and a half point favorites. I know I said I'd try not to look, 
but I did have significant money on Arizona minus two and a half, full disclosure, before the New England game. And of course, how you can get burned on that is that might be a good number because I figured, uh, not figured, there's more to it than that, but I had an educated guess that this line could go to three and perhaps a heavily juiced uh, Broncos plus three and a half, giving very good value on the Arizona minus two and a half, assuming that it would be Kyler Murray versus Brett Rippon. Uh, Kyler Murray, of course, having a, what looks to be a more uh, season-ending ACL injury, and this is flipped from uh, Arizona minus two and a half to Arizona plus two and a half. So I've lost value on that. Like not like it's not great. Let's put it that way. There are worse, a lot worse situations, you know, like if, if Patrick Mahomes went out, like think of that with that, if they're two and a half point favorites, I can't imagine who that would be against the bills at home. Anyways, that would, uh, what would that go to bills? Bills minus six and a half bills minus seven on the road. Like, that would be a really big one, whereas in between the threes, that's not as much. I mean, that's that's a lot of shade, like like mathematical shade <laughs> at Kyler Murray, it feels like. Because when you look at it, too, you go, you know, Colt McCoy shouldn't be able to hold a candle to uh, Kyler Murray, but that's not really not the case, like in win probability. Obviously, Kyler Murray's better, but it's not, you know, head and shoulders better. Uh, so that being said, we're going to take Denver, but that's because I have prior knowledge. I know Kyler Murray's out. This is a good line. I, you know, I, I'm admitting it. I, I'm admitting it. I am I'm looking. I'm, I'm from the future, looking into the past and making this selection in real life. I'm not sure what holds value here. This is a really good, uh, this would be a good, uh, a good market to keep an eye on. Cause it is interesting. And I, I did capitalize on the jets in probably this very situation that it's, I guess maybe that's kind of why I'm, I'm more confident in the number I had uh, with the Arizona Cardinals. Considering the Jets-Denver game, where it was pretty much identical to. And I did very, very, very well on that Jets, uh, uh, Jets-Broncos game. Because I was able to get the Jets at, a, at plus money. And I was able to get the under. And I was able to get down a correlation on one of those parlay tickets, Jets-Under. Which is adds about... Here, we'll give a little trade secret. Like in, in it depends on uh, the correlation uh, is strongest with the lower the total. So and then you know and obviously bigger the dog too. But like the the Jets plus two and a half or uh, if you were to tease it, the Jets plus eight and a half and under. I think it was uh, uh, if you teased it was under thirty seven. That was like uh, or might have been a might have been thirty five and a, or thirty six and a half. That would be like a three and a half, four percent edge. So if you were able to get that, um, the correlation would be really strong. I know I'm going long winded and we're uh, sidestepping it, but that was a very similar game. Jets against Denver, uh, Arizona going against uh, and that the Brett Rippin Denver Broncos. But then unfortunately, now we have it flipped completely the other way because uh, Colt McCoy is starting for the Arizona Cardinals, and I got hosed. More than likely, I still have a chance. Uh, Lloyd Christmas is still saying we have a chance with the uh, Arizona Cardinals, which are now plus two and a half. Next up, we have Tennessee Titans on the road against the LA Chargers with the LA Chargers as three point favorites here. I, you know, personally, this is one of the games I enjoyed maybe the most is that Miami game. It was so strange in that there were a lot of passing attempts from the team that was leading. It's generally not how it goes. And a lot of completions, too. That was probably Justin Herbert's best game as a professional. Like, it was it was really good. I really enjoyed that game. That being said, we're going to take the Tennessee Titans. We're going to take the three points. And this line's probably at equilibrium. You probably can't win on either side. I don't have much to add other than that. Like, it's... I do like these teams. I do find them interesting. Brandon Staley kind of disappoints me a little bit in that he doesn't seem as gung-ho going for it or you know he's tapered his approach maybe too much like easing off the gas a little bit would have been okay in terms of being aggressive but I feel like he's done it just a tad too much this year which you know I had high hopes but then again I was blessed with Philadelphia so contest pick Tennessee plus three next up we the Cincinnati Bengals on the road as three and a half point favorites against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this feels like this should be Tampa Bay minus three like if you're just amazing 
Amazing. And it's not like uh, there's some O-line injuries clearly for uh, the Buccaneers, but that still shouldn't – like a lot of this is performance-based. Like the the odds of the Bucs um, or the, the perception, the power rankings, I hate. I, I mostly hate power rankings. It's probably a little bit harsh. It, it's, the perception has just shifted monumentally. It's very negative, and, and rightfully so. They're just not that good. It's it's strange. It's strange to get to see a, a team on paper, you know, just getting crushed on both sides of the ball, especially the San Francisco game, you know, recent one. Is it a coaching thing? Is it like it, it, Todd Bowles? Is that shift that bad? Is it just bad luck here to a degree? Is it um, just because you have a low sample, right? Like if it was baseball, you could make a pretty good case between one uh, manager to another, but in the NFL, when you only get, you know, 17 games, it's not that easy to do. But this has been like, it's not like the Bucks are losing close ones, like for being reverse Minnesota. They're, they're getting beat. So this three and a half point seems justified, and I actually like them. I like Cincinnati. I don't see why Cincinnati couldn't be five and a half point favorites. I really don't. You know, obviously that's not a huge, as I mentioned every five minutes, it's not as big of a gap, three and a half to five and a half. But I like Cincinnati. I don't mind laying the three and a half points. On to the next one. We have the that was a contest pick Cincinnati. Real life tentative. We have the New York Giants on the road against the Washington football commanders. Uh, with 67% of the volume on the New York Giants uh at uh plus four and a half. We're gonna take the New York Giants, we're gonna take the four and a half points. I had to confirm here. Sometimes I write the wrong one. Uh I think that this this line is a little bit high in that New York, it's kind of they're kind of having a really hard regression to the mean so they started off like pretty lucky winning all these games and now everything's kind of falling apart but i think that's giving them uh they're catching a few too many points whereas the commanders kind of started pretty poorly and they've really turned the corner i i just feel like this is a three game three three and a half with juice on the uh with juice on the sorry on the new york giants so i you know i like Giants four and a half. I'm going to consider it in real life. And, you know, it, it's kind of weird. They tied earlier. You know, How much do you extrapolate from that one game? Not that much. Total was 40. It's one game. But I do think that this is, they're catching too many points. So we're going to see what happens. Giants plus four and a half. Next up with the LA Rams on the road. The comeback LA Rams, two touchdowns down. Unlikely Baker Mayfield led LA Rams plus seven and a half. At the Green Bay Packers. Uh, currently, there are 70% of the betters on the LA Rams. And I kind of like the LA Rams. I kind of like the Rams money line, dare I say it. This is one that I do like. The only issue that's kind of scaring me is that this is... I have a feeling this will be solid. Kind of a, one of the measures I know that I'm if I've made a bad bet. If I bet early on a team uh, like I have on the LA Rams. If it just stays at 7.5 the whole way and close at 7.5... I kind of feel like, you know, I gave away 1.8% of whatever I bet. That's kind of what I feel like after. So I count that as a loss regardless of what happens. Um, you know, in, in poker, they call it Sklansky Bucks. It would be an example. Say you have two kings, you lose to ace five or, you know, you lose to ace king. Let's give you that way, you know, to give a Texas Hold'em reference. The Financially, you're out the money, but you did gain um, in uh, expected value in that hand, right? Whereas, like, it can happen in the reverse. Say you win with ace-king against kings. I mean, you did win the hand, but that doesn't mean that... Uh, that doesn't mean that you got your money in good, right? And even then, there's there's mistakes you can make where you be able to... I can get in poker forever. Either way, is the... Uh, uh, you should count things against the closing line. That's the best easy metric we have at the moment. So if you don't beat the closing line, the gap between the two numbers with the juice factored in should be what your expected value was on that game. I mean, obviously, that, I mean, that that's giving the closing line exact down the middle precision, which is impossible. But every edge in gambling is, estima is estimated. It really is. Even a coin flip, I was explaining to someone else, if a coin flip in physical nature is... There are biases that we don't account for. It's not a true 50-50. It might be a 
you know, 50.00001 to a 49.999, whatever the, uh, um, whatever the uh, converse to that number is. Nothing, you know, per perfect uh, point in case, Percy Diaconis created a machine that can flip a coin always heads or always tails it can choose and it can do it with near 100 percent precision so nothing is really unless it's in a complete scientific vacuum which even then like a computer can they really achieve random can they probably not so there's always a estimation factor to this so the closing line for us for the mere um not mathematical prod prod prodigies it is probably the best way to measure uh um to measure how you would fare in expected value over a long term is comparing yourself to that so that being said long-winded i took the la rams i took the seven and a half points and i won't be happy if it stays the same regardless of result and these are the this is the lightning round see how see how fast i can go here Seattle plus three and a half, Indy plus four and a half, Cleveland minus three, Miami plus seven and a half, New Orleans minus four, Philadelphia minus eight and a half, Jacksonville plus six, Detroit plus one, Carolina minus one, Houston plus 14 and a half, New England Patriots plus one, Denver Bronx plus three plus two and a half, Tennessee Titans plus three, Cincinnati minus three and a half, New York Giants plus four and a half, and perhaps the not so stagnant LA Rams plus seven and a half. And the 2022 2023 week 14. Week fifth oh week fourteen pick against the spread winner is Worm seventy seven. I think this is his second win. Worm, the uh, more or less probably the antagonist of the critically acclaimed film, is it? Rounders. You know, another poker reference. Not very good poker in that movie, but it is a good movie regardless. Worm 77, when it came in at 9 and 4, he must have won the tiebreak against Starfire. It's a fun name. Mike J, 8 and 5. Wook Dog, 8 and 5. Not Carnival Personnel. At Pertsonnel at 8 and 5. Uh, Blue Blood 9385. Jimmy, you should get that checked out. Jimmy G and the Super Friends. Brock Purdy and the Super Friends, 8 and 5. Jones and for Johnson, 8 and a half. Musman the Busman. We will get back to you, Musman. Uh, big rise on a sabbatical uh, for a variety of reasons. We will look into your comment from two weeks ago. And pretty fly for a fat guy, 8, eight and eight and a half. Currently leading the over bowl, overall uh, <laughs> leaderboard against the spread is. Eric Hayden, CEO, at 116 and 86 over uh, the 110 and 90 uh, Wook Dog, and or 112 and 90, followed by a uh, fan favorite Untouchable J at 110 and 92, aka Drive Turkey, Detroit's Kneecaps, High Roller, Jameson Musman, the Busman, Worm, and Big Ryan, the Fat Guy. Really, you got a nice, nice, uh, we got a nice distribution here with 52.5 and 52 right in the middle here. Almost a bell curve in the top 10. The JSM 15 name of the week, honorable mentions. Grandma's homemade apple pie. Prime time for president. Sure, sure, why not? It's clown world, isn't it? In sunny California, pimps up, host down. Hello, Mr. Qatar. World Cup. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. One of the strangest geopolitical events ever. How many people died? The fat guy is taking the Browns against the Ravens, and if he does, I want the, that Ingles beanie. It's a toque. We're Canadian. Toque is a way better term than a beanie. And a, bean, a, a beanie is like, uh, it's too vague, too. It doesn't uh, differentiate between like a skull cap or like something with a pom-pom. A toque does do that. Big Rye, MII last week. Fast guy, fat guy must have ate him. I did tell you he is starring in the sequel to Willow. Christy McVie, you... Eve Plum and Linda Carter were my teenage crushes. R.I.P. Uh, you are dating yourself quite a bit with that. And followed by, you whip me, Nick. You whip, or sorry, you whip me, my... Hold on, let's get it one more time. You whip my wife, Nick. Well, these are just junipers, and they are, aren't hard enough to hit anybody. And the JSM15, name of the week, Big Rye couldn't pay his bail again. In Canada, we don't actually have bail, but I do know Big Rye isn't going to be able to go anywhere near school anytime soon. And we want to thank you to our channel members, Blurry Blends, Colton Armitage, Dan Dickerson, J Mac, Jamie Gonzalez, Josh Hill, Allen, Mickey Hill. Kind of switched them, man. I got in Buffalo. Pemis, hello, Finland, Ronald Fowler, Figure Scare, Untouchable J, and Zale M. Aragagan. And make your picks against the spread for week 15 uh, at www.bigrideinthefatguy.com. And closing thoughts. Not my best one. I felt a lot better last week. Uh, I tried to come at it with the same vigor today, 
But I guess a lot of thoughts jumbled. Things didn't flow as much this week. But, you know, it, this is a stream of consciousness type thing. And I think it, you get the most honesty out of that type of stuff. So, anyways, best of luck on your wagers.